it's um, three past five, so I'll call the meeting to order. Are we, do we have a quorum? Five. You're a full-time member, right? You cabinet is too? Yeah. And five is all we need, right, yep. Ashley? I think so. Okay. <coughs> so I'll call the meeting to order. And um, can we vote the minutes as one vote? Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yeah, I think, I think that's fine if everyone has Anybody have a problem with voting the minutes as one of them? Nope. Does anybody have anything specifically to one of the minutes that they might have a question to or wouldn't want to vote on if they weren't at a meeting? Nope, I read, read them all and they're fine. In fact, if I may comment, Ashley's doing a wonderful job at the minutes. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're great. very thorough. So, if I may, can I make a motion? Yes. I'd like to as make a motion. As, no one, as long as no one has an objection to any specific set of minutes. I'm going to abstain from the ABC, but that's fine. Okay. okay. Uh, I'll make a motion to uh, accept the minutes of November 12, 2019, January 14, 2020, and February 11, 2020. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. 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 Abstain. I'm opposed, so four zero one. That still gives us our an abstaining vote is still a quorum vote, right? Except in town meeting. Except the town meeting, where they have a different set of rules. Okay. Um, first on is the discussion of the mixed use 18 unit um, residential unit project. Um, and I'm assuming that's you. Yes, that is. Great. Uh, why don't you introduce yourself and okay. looking forward to uh, seeing what you got. All right. My name is Sayed Halaby. Um, I'm going to purchase a uh, contract to purchase the property at 1363-1391 Main Street. It's where the Leo's Pizzeria is, the 1A auto sales, the dealership behind it. Oh, okay. Good. Yeah. So um, we started this process you know, last summer trying to put something together that might work there. Um, commercial was by right at the site. So anything commercial, retail, offices, that's, that's all a buy right. Um, we wanted to do it as a mixed use, so uh, the zoning allows under a special permit to do second and third story residential units. So that's where um, we started with putting the project together as a mixed use project. Um, after going back and forth with the building commissioner, we actually spoke to Ash, I think it was the first meeting we had right here, <coughs> excuse me, um, we put together what we have right here with some adjustments. We went February 5th before the zoning board um, for our first special permit hearing. Um, there wasn't much objection to the, the project uh, with the exception of density. So we promised them that we'd go back, work on density, see if we can reduce some units or some commercial space. Let me interrupt you just go for ahead. a second. I want to get you off track, but yeah. who had the density problem? The board. Which one? The zoning board. Zoning board? Yeah, ZBA. We did not have any variances. That's that's important to know. But we, no variances at all in the site. What, um, what, what's the, de the density in square footage, or number of units, or re amount of ratio of retail to residential? They weren't uh, clear on that. It was just the size of the building overall, just the square footage of the whole building, the amount of units, is what, what I took from it. So we went back to the drawing table for the past month and a half, and literally today, just this is what we came up with. That's why you guys are seeing the 18 units there. We actually reduced the amount of units to 16 units, and that in turn also reduced the amount of commercial space, I think by seven or 800 square feet on the first level. Um, now, it worked for us just because site plan issues that I was having, I, I wanted a sidewalk that would go up to the front and, and so forth. And you're gonna see all these things as I go through this presentation. But, um, so right now we're at 16 units, second and third floor. Um, 14 of them are two bedrooms, and we have two one bedrooms. The two, the two bedroom units are 1,100 square feet, and the one bedrooms are 800 square feet. Um, I'll just go through the slides, and that way you'll get a better idea of what we're looking at. Are the slides the same as what we're looking at here? Yes, they okay. should be, yeah, yeah. So this is just a bird's eye view from the top general area that we're in. Uh, we've got the Dunkin' Donuts on the left. I'll zoom in a little bit. Dunkin' Donuts is on the left right over here. Car wash, uh, that used to be the floral shop on the left-hand side. Um, then there's a liquor store and a couple other businesses on the other side. And we're right across the street from the Bristol Cafe, that mm -hmm. plaza. Um, the site consists of 32,488 square feet. 
So we're allowed coverage of 40%. Right now, we're just around 34.9% coverage. So we're well below the allowed coverage. Um, let me go to the next slide. Does the allowed coverage yeah. account for pavement as well? The, they'll, they'll call that impervious surface. So right. they'll add the 40%. Um, you get a maximum of 70% of impervious surface. Per, okay. Yeah, so the building's gonna be included in that. Okay. So if you wanna think of it another way, 30% has to be like grass area or something that gotcha. lets water go through. So this is the existing condition site plan, what, what's there right now. So you'll see the pizza shop right there. That actually is two storefronts, so I think it's 500 square feet each side. And then it has two apartments on the top. So the general use right now is a mixed use if you wanna look at it that way. There's the car dealership in the back. Currently, without counting the tandem parking for the, uh, for the dealership, there's about 17 to 19 parking spaces, depending on how you want to look at them. And this, everything in the back right here is all like grass and trees. There's a fence over here, um, right behind the tandem parking for the, uh, for the car lot. On the south side there, can you go back to yeah. one second? On the south side, yeah. so close to the florist, mm -hmm. see those parking spaces that run along the bottom? Yeah. Is that on your property as no. well? No, that's not. That's on the, uh, that, that, that's the floral shop. That, okay. Yeah. I was like, 17, man. That looks like yeah. more than 17 parking Oh, yeah. Spaces. I mean, if you want to calculate the tandem ones, I, I'm only calculating it from here to here. Yeah, that's what I figured. And, okay. and you'll see why I'm bringing up that point in a second. <coughs> and they make us put all the stuff on there sure. for a site plan just so you can know what's going on around it. So this is underground parking. All right, the underground parking is exclusively for the, the tenants of the building. There's 32 park spaces, that's my little typo there, but we have 32 park spaces below grade, all right? Um, and that should suffice for the 16 units, so two parking spaces per unit. There's an elevator in the garage, takes you right up to whatever floor you're going to. We have two handicapped spots right there in the corner of that L. Um, they're very close to the, uh, the elevator. And this is 1A, and that's the driveway that goes down into the garage. So this is the first, uh, the, the ground floor, where the commercial um, retail area would be. So this is like an alcove, if you wanna look at it that way, that leads into the garage. And these are the storefronts we have right here. Uh, the doors that we have, you, you could subdivide this, you can have two storefronts in the front, you can subdivide it anyway, you know, and obviously you have to follow the building code but it could be subdivided. We have approximately 9,000 square feet of leasable commercial space, um, though the ground floor is you know, about 11,000 and change. Um, 1,800 there is uh, square feet, goes back to like the lobby area and all that that is required to get up to the second floor for residential. So this is the uh, second floor and the third floor is gonna be a mirror image of it. We have the one bedroom apartment is right there 800 square feet, and then the rest are all two bedrooms at about 1,100 and change. Two bedrooms, uh, two bath, uh, what you would expect in today's day and age. Um, this is my favorite unit right here, the corner one of the front. Nice layout to it. So that's the third floor. It's another, it's just a mirror image. And then this is to give you a general idea. This also obviously has to go through a site plan review, and they're going to nitpick this, and we'll figure out what we need to do, but. This is the general look that we have. The front end elevation to the left, that's gonna be a garage door. We're gonna figure that out. Um, on the right hand side is gonna be a driveway on the front end elevation. On the right side elevation, this is on the side that um, is near, uh, closer to the car wash. You'll see that that's mainly where the storefronts kind of are. Um, and that's where most of the uh, parking's gonna be. We have some parking going in in the driveway on the right hand side as well. We'll see those in other slides. So that's the rear elevation, we've got the two fire exits there, and that's pretty much just a grassy area in the back of the building. And then the left side elevation, that's what would overlook the, uh, the floral side, floral shop side and the Dunkin' Donuts. So this gives you another perspective. This is from the Dunkin' Donuts side, the floral side. Uh, that's the garage that goes on to the, uh, down to the parking garage at the bottom. We already have two curb cuts at this property, so we took advantage of them. Um, they're very loose curb cuts, as they say right now. They're about 33 feet long each. Um, 
the zoning requires it to be 24 feet. So we fixed it at 24, put the proper curves. Um, so the, the curb cuts are still in the same exact location as they are right now. And you can see that we have two entrances to the storefronts in the front. Uh, they're hand everything's handicap accessible. We're still gonna work on this area right here with site plan review and see where the grass should be, but by reducing the units, it solved a few issues that were, were on my mind with site plan review. We didn't have a walkway leading up to the front of the building. You would have to walk in the driveway pretty much. There's no rule against it, but I didn't like it. I, I wanted something that, you know, at least would, would protect the building from the cars back and out from the parking spaces. There's gonna be parking spaces over here. Um, I wanted to protect the building with, the, with something at least five, six foot, or seven foot buffer, which is pretty much what we have right now. The grass might maybe on the opposite side and the curb might be closer to the driveway, so it might flip these around. But again, that's gonna be, um, go, when we go to a site plan review, we'll figure that all out. Yeah. So this is, if you are going through the drive through let's say at the Dunkin' Donuts, and you look back, this is what you're gonna see. And this is from the car wash side. And this gives you a good idea of where you know, the, the parking lot's gonna be. We have 18 parking spaces above grade, and that's exactly what's required for the commercial space that we have. Every 500 square feet um, requires a parking space. We have that, we have a handicap accessible, um, a van accessible, handicap accessible uh, parking space right next to the lobby, which would be right in that, inside that L. Now, the reason why we ended up doing the entry to the building in the inside part of that L, because parking is not really allowed in the zoning bylaw in the front of the buildings. I mean, if, we, if you drive down 1A, everybody has parking in the front of the buildings. They're all against what the zoning calls for. Zoning allows you to set your building back up to 25 feet maximum, 15 foot minimum, and you need six feet of you know, grass or shrubbery or something from the sidewalk in. Uh, and it's restricted, completely restricted. You really, you can only, you can do driveways, you can do like a, um, walkways, but you're not allowed to have parking. You can't park cars there. Uh, so, you know, I'm, I'm proud to say that we really worked hard on making sure that everything that's in the zoning bylaw was taken into consideration in developing this site. Everything. Um, and I, I believe it is the only, with the exception, I think, of the Cumberland Farms gas station. I think it's the only building on the street that actually follows the zoning bylaw. And let me see what else can I add to this. And they like to buffer the parking lots from the street. So when you're driving down 1A the way the zoning bylaw wants, so they, they, they want you to drive down 1A and not see cars parked or parking lots. And with the underground parking, we solved that you know, big issue. And I look at this building as two buildings in one, really. You have the parking garage underneath that is for the tenants. And you have the commercial parking, which is all above grade, easy in, easy out. Um, and that helps everybody get right into the storefronts that are in the back. That's why we made it a longer building so that it's an easier shopping experience for someone. They don't have to walk 700 feet <laughs> to get to their storefront. Um, and, and that's why I also like the fact that I was able to add that sidewalk in. Uh, and it makes it easier for handicap accessibility to get to the front. Let me just go outside here. And that's it. Yeah, any questions? Anything? Oh, you wanna, I know you oh, I, I'll dig on it. But I think it looks great. I think it's I a, appreciate a good that. addition to cleaning up up oh, there. Yeah. And it looks like you've gone through great extent in order to uh, accommodate the town and the zoning and everything. So oh, yeah. I think it'd be a great addition up there. I could see that. somebody taking it along with the uh, building that they just revamped next to the gas station. Oh, yeah. A lot of that stuff starting same. to get cleaned up up mm -hmm. there, which is nice. Oh, yeah. Appreciate you coming in and investing in mobile. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, the site has its challenges, but. Have you done this in other communities? I've done this mostly in Boston. Boston's a different process, very different process. How did you did, end up in did, mobile? Did, did you. Uh, <laughs> property for sale. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> did you think the, the, uh, the nuances of the zoning regulations were somewhat inhibitive to your design? Your conceptual well, know, this philosophical zone, ideas initially zoning always limits certain well, things we know. We, yeah we, we know. Um, with this particular project 
you know, just give you my insight. When I first met with, uh, with Mike, the building commissioner, I remember he called Ashley down that day, and I'll uh, give her credit for this. Our initial draft had parking uh, at grade but below the building in the back. Because in my perspective, let me just go back to here. I mean, you know, who would want to visit the storefronts in the back? And the marketability of them is very low in my opinion. But that's when Ashley came out and she's like, we want more business. We, you know, there are offices that'll take over those places, like a real estate office, a legal firm, or engineering firm. So someone will take them over. They don't necessarily need the storefront, but you already you do have some storefront. And that's when I was like, you know what? It's a different perspective at and some thoughts that came into my mind at the time was like, why don't we just make it all business? Let's buy right, and then we'll push the park in underground, which a lot of people in town they're telling me that there is no example of underground parking. But in the zoning, you know, they do allow it, uh, and it's not calculated towards the uh, uh, what do you call it, the, the gross uh, floor area ratio or anything like that. It's in the definition of it, and it says anything having to do with parking to satisfy the zoning bylaw. Uh, you can do if it's underground. So we took advantage of that. Basically underneath that above grade parking, well, the driveway mostly, and we have some, we're going to have some parking spaces over here too, but um, right underneath here, there's actually parking spaces underground. Uh, and we've respected the setbacks and everything underground, so we don't have any issues with that. The rear setback should be a maximum of 20 feet. We're at 44 feet. Um, the height restriction is 40 feet. We're at 36, I think, or 35 and change. We're well below all the dimensional regulation uh, requirements to make the site happen, but um, you know some thoughts went in my head of like you know people my age don't really want a lawn to take care of. They don't want yard work. They just want to come home and relax. They want something modern, a two bedroom apartment. With but uh, if you take it a step further, you know a lawyer, an engineer, someone would want their office where they live. So you know the. Uh, rent an apartment and rent a commercial space below. I guess that's what they do in European countries and stuff and it works great and you cut back on that commute, put more money in your pocket and you can afford, you know, a nicer apartment, have your business, you know, on the first floor. So that that's you know, like at least for the back of the building that's, you know, something to target for a target market on those. Do you have any tenants Lined up yet, or prospective tenants? Not yet, not yet. We're just waiting to. I don't to mean residential. I just mean. Yeah, no, I don't have anybody right now in, in mind, but uh, I mean we're open to you know whoever's in the area. If someone wants to move into it and get a new space, you know we're open to working with anyone. But I don't I don't have anything signed with anybody, and you know it's just such an early stage. Right, I don't have sure. a special yeah. permit or anything. So I'm assuming the underground is going to be two per unit. Is yes. That yeah, the zoning uh, uh, calls for two. So 32, we got 16 units. It just works perfect that way. Um, so it'll have a garage door, just like you would have that regular single family house. You hit the button and you drive into your garage. It's just a big garage. Park the car. It's a heated garage. You get in your elevator and you go upstairs. And you and, can. And visitors. Gets parking. <laughs> the, accessible. Right. No visitors because we have enough commercial parking above grade. Mm -hmm. We don't need to open up the garage to the public. Okay. But it is for the tenants. Right. I mean, we're targeting the tenants of the building. Uh, but yeah, we, we have 18 parking spaces above grade, and that's exactly what we need for um, the commercial. And believe it or not, like, there's certain rules in the zoning. If you have a, a mixed-use building, I could be wrong, but I've read it several times, and this is the only conclusion I come up with. In a mixed-use building, they ask you to go with the minimum requirement for parking. So, you know, we might have an extra parking space or two, but we kind of just take them out because we don't want to have to go for a special permit again for an extra parking space. As messed up as that sounds, right. more parking is not necessarily good in the zoning pile. <laughs> yeah. so, um, and, and the other thing is, I, I personally like the setback and don't put parking in the front, because, but that, that only, that's only good if everybody's doing it on the street. So if you're driving down Main Street, and you got green on both sides, and they're all, and you know that there's storefronts in the back, and that's the general landscape mm -hmm. that you're driving through. It makes sense. So the zoning bylaw, I like it. I like the way it's written if if it's applied to everyone. But like even that that the blue building down the street that that's next to the gas station, um, all of its parking is in the front. No, oh, the zoning book hasn't been adulterated over the years. Massage. Car yeah. dealers hate our 
Yeah. Some of it might have been there before. Cars in the front. It, yeah. It's unheard of. You, you can't park your car within 35 feet of mm -hmm. the road. So. Yeah. But if I had it my <laughs> way, I, I like the way the zoning is. But again, uh, you have one building that's mine looks like the odd one. Yeah. When in actuality, yeah. it's it's the one. Well, it's the one that fo it followed everything down to the letter. I hope so. It's a, it's a mo I'm going to call it the, mo the model building for the street, for the zoning bylaw. Yeah, we, we haven't, uh, yeah, no variances. Everything's just exactly as it says in the zoning bylaw. Can I just ask, when you get to that point of the process, yeah. can we talk about a sign program for your building? Yeah, definitely. Yeah. It's not required under the, the zoning, but yeah. I think we're, we're talking a lot about facades and mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know how signage would really work on a building with because uh, you have storefronts in the back and they would need some kind of advertising, so that's something that's definitely has to be discussed. Yeah, I'm sure planning board's going to rip yeah. the shreds anyway, so on the signage and storefronts. So. I mean, we we expect you know an extensive process with site plan review and the planning board. I like the idea of the garage door on the, facing the street. Yeah, I mean for the tenant for the uh, mm -hmm. residents. It makes sense. Yeah, it does, actually. And what's the point of having all that extra volume going through the commercial parking lot? Because right. mm -hmm. some of our original plans had a parking garage entrance, you know, going in from the back because we have about 40 foot, 44 feet setback uh, right now. But, you know, that would increase the, uh, the impervious surface greatly. Um, the slope going into the garage and something we're working with engineering going back and forth right now. But... Um, I decided to you know, just take advantage of the two curb cuts that we already have and basically separate the two uses going on in the building. So are you right at your setback with on the floor side and then the floor's parking lot is there? Yes, we are uh, six feet two inches on the, uh, floor, side. On the floor side. One spot at six six feet uh, because the, the law is just a little weird how it goes in and out. But yeah, we we've uh, we're, we're at the setback. Anybody want to take bets that the chief of fire chief is going to make him change things so he can turn his two hundred foot ladder well, we, in that parking we've, lot? Well, we we've been going back and forth with that for a couple months. Yeah, that, so we've solved that problem. I haven't. It doesn't matter that there's a big parking lot right <coughs> next door, but whatever. Yeah. Well, the thing is, we don't have control of the parking lot that's next door. No, I know. I'm just being facetious. I know. <laughs> I know. But I do have control of my parking lot, and, and it did come up in our initial uh, sit down with all the department heads back in January, uh, and that was the main concern for the fire department. Is they they have this big rig. It's 47 feet long, almost 48 feet. It has to turn around on the property, and there's no way around it. They're not going to back it onto the street, and they're firm on that. Um, uh, I don't have a site plan. Right, I have it printed out, and I can pass it around to you guys to take a look at it. But on the site plan, we just worked this all out, and now you guys can pass this around, please. That's our site plan right now that we're working with. We have a, what they call a hammerhead, basically at the end of the parking lot, where you can go in there and do a you know, two-, three-point turn and, and back out. We, we had that initially just so that people driving in can't find a parking space, let's say. They don't have to back all the way out, so they have a place to turn around. Uh, the fire engine couldn't turn around in what we had. It was just mainly for cars or delivery vehicles. Uh, so they asked us to make it bigger um, uh, to accommodate the, the big ladder. Uh, so we tried doing um, permeable blocks, and we, you know a lot of towns allow those just so we don't go above our 70% of impervious surface allotment. Who, who was the day that asked you that? Who was the one who asked you me? You said somebody asked you to. Paul Barry, bigger. the deputy chief. Fire department. Fire department. Okay. So um, we suggested doing the permeable blocks. Um, they, they're allowed. We, we spoke to Mike, and he said they're allowed to do the code because uh, we didn't find anything that was against it in the zoning bylaw to... Count, count to not count it towards the impervious surface yeah. just so that we have some kind of a turnaround for the fire engine you know they don't have to drive up on grass and turn around um, but the fire department uh, was against the idea of permeable blocks they wanted pavement uh, That's strange so uh, you know the, the permeable blocks have worked in a lot of towns and they you know they can handle 80,000 pounds it's not a big deal and they let water go through you know, calculate to the 100, 100 year storm for like drainage and all that so 
we didn't have issues with that. But uh, again, that's another thing that I felt, you know, I want to work with the town. I want to get this, I want to get everybody happy. I want to get everybody on board. And if it's little things that I can do, I'll do one. So when we reduced the size of the building, um, it gave us a little more uh, impervious surface to play with. So we made it bigger, the, the hammerhead in the back, and we have um, a diagram that we sent over. I haven't heard from them, uh, sent it over a couple of weeks ago, but just wanted to make sure that it's okay with them. But we do have a diagram that shows that the fire engine can turn around in the back. And if that fire engine can turn around, <laughs> I'm sure any, any machine, anything going in there can turn around. Uh, tractor trailers and things like that, they're just going to have to back up on the site like they do on all the sites on the street. And there's a lot of site plan reviews that have been done in the past 10 years with the neighboring properties, and they all back up into the... Uh, and again, I don't know what the nature of the businesses are going to be if they even need tractor trailers, but that's probably the only restriction I can think of. Uh, and another thing I'd like to add, and also you know, emphasizing the model property here, uh, I, I think we're the only property that even offers the fire engine turnaround on site. Don't let that fool you. I know, but some places... Don't let that lull you yeah. to sleep and won't fall. Believe me when I, I say I know. Uh, all the other properties, they, they, they have space where the fire engine can turn around, but they got to drive over parking spaces to do it. And in our situation, they don't, they don't have to drive over parking spaces. There's a dedicated area. It's paved. So I believe we've solved that issue. We went in here back and make sure it's okay with them. Uh, we have a diagram that shows the fire engine turning around and it works on paper. Do you, um, off the top of your head, and if you don't, that's okay. Um, but the reason I'm asking this question is some of the initiatives that we brought up with this committee um, are kind of aligned on our ratio between commercial and residential in, in a mixed use building. Mm -hmm. Do you happen to know off the top of your head the percent of square feet that your commercial is based as to residential? Yeah, for the, for the special permit, depends on what zone you are. The, if this, I think it's the CBD zone and there's the B zone. There's some language that's a little bit right. different in between those two. But the general gist, for us at least, um, you're allowed two times the commercial space. So that's why if you look at it, it's just, you know, the same exact square footage is on every floor because we're allowed up to two times the square footage. Is that of, the way it's written of, in the of, bylaw? Uh, I think it requires you to have two times. It doesn't, it, I can read I know it there's you. a requirement, but I'm surprised they would work, that would be the language. Because I know in the CBD, it's a percentage of square feet, right? Yes, CBD, like that's why I was saying, yeah, CBD is, uh, let me see. Yeah, you know what? Um, we're going to continue to ask questions if, if it's okay with yeah, you. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I'll look at um, the Janelle has to leave, and without him, we don't have a form, so I'd like to get a vote of, uh, you know, support for the project or whatever we're going to do with the project. I'm, I don't want to speak for the board, but I want to get that vote in just so it's okay. a real vote. I, I assume you're here looking for a positive I'm uh, looking for anything I can get. <laughs> so, so anyways, Mark, Mark my, my comments would be for this is that obviously the existing amount of square, uh, existing amount of commercial space there is minimal. It's probably mm -hmm. under 2,000, 3,000. Oh, yeah. We're going from that to ele almost 11,000 or so in commercial. It, leasable areas, about yeah. 9,000. Yeah. 9,000. So it's a great increase in the commercial base there along yeah. with that. And so I think it would really enhance that area and be good. So as far as I, I, I am concerned, I'm in, in favor of it, and I'd love to see it happen. So I, I think from this board, it would be good to give him a favorable vote before he goes off to the planning board in order to pursue it. Sure. Any other comments before I entertain a motion? Can I add something? Yeah. So what I can do is, based on some of these comments, and if you have any other specific comments, I can draft a letter um, and send it to the CBA. That sounds good. You send it up to everybody, right? Um, planning board, ZBA, whoever you're going to be in front of. I, I would I would say in that letter that we endorse the use of the hammerhead and the uh, permeable blocks because we have done it before. I don't like the fact. It's probably I like to say this on TV, but the fire department seems to be getting more into building codes. Yeah. They shouldn't be specifying the, <coughs> the driveway. That's not well, that's not their job. 
Well, and I don't like I, it because listen, it's, I, it, becomes a, plan, it becomes a I restriction on the uh, I said I'm development standards. Let me tell you what the real problem is, and then we'll get Danella out of here. Um, the real problem is not what Deputy Chief Barry suggests. He's allowed to suggest whatever he wants, and he's doing it in good faith. It's the planning board and the other boards that are now fire protection service, and they're going to listen to whatever he says at any cost, even if it's not necessarily reasonable for the specific project. So I wouldn't put it on Paul Barry, but I will say that there's nothing wrong with permeable block, but if the planning board or ZBA listens to that, then they're, in my opinion, that's the board that's going over, that's yeah. overstepping. However, you I'll entertain- You named the parties, I didn't name any yeah. well, I'm just saying the two concepts are widely yeah. used in other towns, and they're important uh, tools for development of a prop property in the proper way. Yeah. And so I, again, I would just say, maybe Lori would say, we do endorse the uh, hammerhead and the block as a, as a use. For, for commercial development. Yeah, okay, well, we can we can look at that when um, someone reviews the letter. But um, I'll entertain a motion if someone wants to make one um, on support for this project. I'll make a motion that we support the um, the filing here before us, um, the site plan and the uses and the residential and the coverages, um, and any of the comments that we had early in the day incorporated into a letter to the planning board. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? Five zero zero. Right. Thank you. Don't mind if we still. Right. Yeah, let's keep going. Yeah, that's fine. Yeah. Yeah. She was having a. <coughs> <coughs> we can still ask questions uh, if we have them, right? Even because we, I wanted to hold before Denel. Yeah. Can we put some areas of it? You know. Yeah. If we don't have a hard date, then okay. I don't know. I'm gonna probably have my hands full. Oh, we got it. We just can't take any votes, right? All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. We just can't vote on anything else. <laughs> Can we discuss or no? You tell me. I'm unclear. Um, I think to the, the zone under, if it were an application for a zone zero, it would be definitely no. We couldn't discuss an application for the zone. But, but we're only a recommending board, right? We're, we're not, gonna, right. We're not so making any rules here. Right. So I think that under the circumstances, because I didn't allow. Kevin, um, actually, I don't know if everybody got their questions in or not, so I didn't want to stop that it, but right. I knew Denel had it's to go. A nice it's a nice project. Thank I think you. it's a great project, and you know, we have our support. And Thank you. I appreciate it. Move on. I'll just add about the, the permeable blocks that the main the main reason why they did not want them is they're saying that uh, they feel that they're never uh, maintenance. So, like, grass may grow between them or the they're not plowed, or I don't know. It's just, uh, but but th that's the reasoning. It's not that they're just don't want them because they don't want them. But this reasoning, I mean, we could have added it into because I, I did discuss this with some people on my side just to see how we could work around it. Uh, but we could add that into uh, the maintenance. Uh, the the yeah. point is, this is not a. Um, <coughs> is it for your ratio, your zoning ratio, or is it a conservation issue? Because the conservation is involved with permeability. They insist on the green between the blocks. They will not, if you put gravel in, they'll have you take it out. Yeah, no, the, there are parts of this country that insist on gravel. The, well, no, the, the, the block with grass. Yeah. Because yeah, it can I'm support saying. a vehicle, but it looks like grass and acts like grass and, and lets water. Well, the, the get blocks in. that we were suggesting um, need maintenance every three or four years, somewhere in there, a maximum of five years. I don't know what's going to grow between them or not. Are they going to. But they're designed to literally drain all the water as if they were just grass. Now, the reason why I was for that, uh, for the permeable blocks, right now it really doesn't matter because we're still below the 70% and we got everything, everybody happy. But uh, we do have a meeting with Conservation Commission coming up sometime in April, we're filing with them. Because part of the property is in the, in the wetlands buffer zone. No wetlands, but just the buffer zone part of it. And we're not building anything in the buffer zone, um, but the back end of the property. Let me see if I have a picture of this somewhere. Was that sigh a, uh, <laughs> a, a an anticipation of the future? <laughs> so right, right over here. I think we have it on the site plan. But uh, the 100 feet of, of buffer is somewhere around here. Okay, 
uh, that's the 100 foot buffer zone. So we're not really building, uh, it's mostly just a parking lot in that, in that buffer zone and most of it's green grass in the back. Uh, and that's where the turnaround is. So the turnaround is taking up a big percentage of the uh, uh, impervious surface right now as, as, as with this new plan that I have. Uh, otherwise that percentage would be a lot lower if we could use those blocks. And, and we've already spoken to Mike and he agrees that, you know, the, the definitions in the zoning bylaw uh, don't prohibit us from using those. And they're not gonna be calculated towards the impervious surface. And, but you, and you could put a maintenance clause or something. Exactly. I mean, they yeah, yeah. condition it on the maintenance. That, that's what we wanted, that, that was our thought. But again, you know, we're here now and we don't need to. I don't know what conservation is going to say about it because yeah. most of that, that hammerhead's all in that 100 foot buffer zone. And maybe you have a couple of parking spaces in the 100 foot buffer zone. But other than that. Survive on 14 units? <laughs> Honestly, I got it. I'm just trying to warn you. It, <laughs> you might have to. I know, I know. Well, the thing you got to keep in mind again is this you know, this business is there right now and there is two buildings, they make money. Um, at a certain point, they just denied a hotel. Yeah, where a hotel used to be, <laughs> on Route One. Believe me, don't count your chickens. Well, what, yeah, five feet of area. Because of five feet of height restriction. Yeah, yeah. Um, just what would we? I love this project. Thanks. Okay, I don't want to. Yeah. And it doesn't look like you're easily discouraged, and I'm glad about that. We're not doing anything against the rules. No, but they'll find rules that you're doing things against. There is. And no. Unfortunately, like. As soon as you said you're going in front of conservation and you're into the buffer zone, yeah, I've sat on, I sat on planning board for three years and I've seen less intrusive things run people through hoops. So the only thing I can say to you there is just make sure that you are planning on any contingency, and they might be very well okay with it because this project is wonderful for the area. I can't imagine anyone not wanting this project, but have a couple of plans together, and uh, just well, in case. You, you have a permitting attorney, or you have anybody? No, I handle you it. You represent yourself. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, don't. I would just say that on that, that you, you'll read it. But the conservation is a hundred foot buffer. They have a twenty five foot no touch. We're not touching that thing, but as long as you're not touching at twenty five feet. You know, yeah, the 25 foot restricted yeah. area, we're nowhere near it. That's, that's so, down in this little corner. Uh, that's slice of pizza. Yeah, I mean, we're, we're not really disturbing the 100 foot buffer. It's mostly just parking spaces in the hammerhead. Now, if their concern is drainage and wanting to maintain everything the way it is, we might have to look back into per permeable blocks. But again, from, from my position, I'm trying to keep everybody happy. Um, and right now, the way it says, we're under that 70% and we have everything paid. So if it's okay with conservation to work with the fire department to, to get what they want, then we're okay with it. It doesn't really bother us in any way. You already have your application in? Yeah, the application's, uh, where, conservation? Well, just in general, like with planning board and what? And with the um, zoning board right now, we're just waiting to get a special permit so they can go to step two. And three. Has anyone talked to you yet about um, any affordable component to this? Um, no, we haven't really brought that up just yet. Move fast or bring it up. Yeah. Um, what are you doing for going next week? Do you want to speak to the community? <laughs> <laughs> Me? It's, a, it's not your problem. Yeah, I know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't apply to it. Yeah. It's not your problem. I mean, yeah, we submit our application in, in January. <laughs> you don't want me to run out of here, do you? <laughs> no. Yeah, so uh, no, I, I think we're okay with that because we submitted this back in January. So we should be fine. Um, I'm sorry. I meant in general, like sharing your support of the project. Not... I'm not talking affordable housing, I'm talking project. Not, yeah, if you think it would help, if you do you think that they're going to have a problem with CBA? I, I, I don't know, but have you spoken with any of the, the neighbors what? about In regards, project? I can't imagine CBA, you don't have, you're not going for any variances or anything. There's right? no variances, I may initial, so. my initial hearing had no variances and neither does this one. Oh. Restaurant across the street's going to love it. It's going to be happy. Right. I mean, they just now the current hearing, 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 sorry. Oh, if you think it's appropriate, then I can try to make it. When is it? Okay, let's touch base. I'll Maybe Chance Hills Pizza wants Thanks. to be in the uh, yeah. retail yeah. portion. I can get there. I've got some people. Um, 
I know. Well, my question yeah. was on the current tenants being mm-hmm. quote unquote displaced. Is, okay. I don't know what. I've had preliminary discussions because right. again, I don't own the property and I'm mm-hmm. limited with what I can do. Correct. But um, yeah, I, they want to move. Let's just put it that way. I don't really want to get into details with them, but right. yeah, I wouldn't be here if they if I felt that no one wants to get out of there. Okay. So um, are they are they ending their business, Leos, or are they moving? The pizza place. Anybody know? Uh, they don't want to tell you. Leo's doesn't want to tell us. Yeah. Why? What's pri- their privacy? I don't know. They get, maybe get the reason. I mean, it's something to keep in mind too. Is that this is not going to happen overnight. Right. It's going to take years. There's plenty of options. If they want to relocate. I mean, by the time no, the permit is there, they relocate. I, I like their pizza. I don't. We want got to a, go we on. got commercial <laughs> space. <laughs> We're building yeah. a commercial space. Well, we have nothing, nothing trade, against anyone. I'll trade you know. that building for this building every single day of the week. I just was, I think a good pizza. I just would hate to, I want to help them find a new spot. Right. <laughs> preferably Chris, Chris, preferably Chris, 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 Chris is taking their business now. <laughs> what makes you choose apartments over condos? Um, financing. You know, when you finance these projects, yeah. I, I just, I've seen 2007 and 2008. And I've seen properties, you know, you, you buy something and after two months it's worth half its value. Yeah. Uh, the rental market is a safer bet. You can always go to condos if you want to. Sure. But the, the rental, when it's you rent an apartment, yeah, it's just, it's safer for banks to get involved with you. They're, sure. they're eager to work with you at that point. But when you talk condos, you're talking sales. Yeah. And, you know, you saw this week when last week. We don't know how that goes. And in between one day and another, mm-hmm. the market crashes, and all of a sudden it's gray. We don't know what's going on. And, and when you have investors with the you know, low interest rate the way it is, there's more investors interested in getting a better return on investment because the bank ain't giving them much. And that's where rental buildings come in. But if you had condos, you're talking more about sales and people are going to be more conservative. And in a situation like this, will they spend, will they not spend? So it's, it's a lot more risk involved in condos. But it doesn't 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 mean that we can't go go back to condos or say let's do condos. If town meeting votes the inclusionary zoning bylaw, are they grandfathered out of it? They go five before that vote is taken place. So as long as somebody doesn't push them along, and then force them to withdraw and refile, they'll be fine. So you filed before the planning board. January tenth. Right. Uh, not the. The, the zoning, we, we filed with the zoning board. Okay. With the uh, ZBA. Okay. <coughs> now, did, you, did you file before the planning board's hearing? I'm pretty sure you did. Um, did I file with the planning board? Yeah. I haven't filed with the no, planning board. No, no, no. Did you file your ZBA application before the planning board advertised their hearing? When did they advertise their hearing? Because even if they advertise the hearing, it's not it wasn't voted into the. There, there are two different interpretations out okay. there. Um, one is that it's not in place until town meeting votes, mm-hmm. which is the one I would be. I think is yeah. accurate. There's one out there that says it's when it's advertised. When they retro it. Um, but I just don't know how the town different towns deal with it differently. So do you know when they um, advertise it? I mean, yeah, uh, if, they, if they withdrew in town meeting approved the ITB, then they... You're going with the, the, you know, the new laws. So... It's true, you have to have two units affordable. Yeah. Just as a point of information. That's all. That's if it passes. It's if it passes. No, and what... not grandfather pick. <laughs> <laughs> no, on a side note, why, why would you... Um, well, why are they voting on something like that if you guys even haven't, haven't reached your 10%? Don't, don't, don't. He will start, <laughs> and we'll be here for three hours. Shut the there are people are trying we'll to... We'll have to shut the camera off. We'll have to just... People are dinner. trying to save from, us for a from 10% while. by going to 30%. <laughs> no one's going it's to called hopscotching. No one's going to 30%. <laughs> you're not qualified to answer. You're not a member of this commission. <laughs> hey, hey, come on now. All right. She keeps us going. I'll just leave she is the heart and soul of this commission. Right, right. Hey, Ash. Ash, come on. Uncalled for. Totally inappropriate. I think you're completely uh, qualified to comment on anything you want. 
Because without you, I wouldn't know what the hell was going on. So don't leave. Thank you. John, come on. What? I, I, I have a right to make a comment, don't I? You do. And I, and I don't need you know, Let's someone some else uh, chiming in, c correcting me. Everybody has the right to voice their opinions and thoughts. So let's uh, just appreciate everyone's thoughts and acknowledge them and keep moving forward. Okay, where are we? You guys are supposed to be asking me that, right? All right I, think so, we're, <laughs> I think we're done. I don't know. Um, anyway, to, just to wrap, the uh, I really appreciate you um, you know, undertaking this, and, and we really are glad to have you in Walpole, honestly. I appreciate that. Uh, is it, and this is your first project in Walpole? Yeah, in Walpole, yeah. Um, you know, I think when you take a ride through downtown, you can see some of the growth that's going on. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, we have two very large apartment buildings going up right in the downtown. And, uh, you know, it doesn't leave a lot of room now, downtown. And whether you know it or not, that stretch of 1A is really like the last, I don't know, frontier, if you will, of, of the part of Walpole that really needs some new modern development. Mm -hmm. So, you know, this is just my own point of view, but I really appreciate you, you know, taking a chance on Walpole and investing in Walpole. And um, we certainly will be supporting you. But was there a difference that they uh, suggested to you regarding the metrics, whether you were CBD? Or not? Uh, we're in the business zone, B zone. Yeah, you're not C in the CBD. No, CBD yeah, so is not near us, no. You miss out on a few of those grades. Well, they miss out on one story, right? CBD can go up to what, four stories, 63 feet? Is that right? It's 45. 45. I believe it's 45. It's 45. Where does the CBD line end? Is it 45 feet? Tracks? No, crap. Union West blew past that three years ago. I thought it was closer than that, but I don't know. Anyway, 45 feet is, is that town-wide? Well, the parking yeah. CBD, uh, you want CBD? 52 feet. That's right, 52 and CBD and four. As a Highway business is 45. Yeah. Yeah. Highway business should be 10 stories, but I'm not gonna get off. Yeah. Yeah. Highway, f yeah, it's 45, not more than four stories. And then there's a footnote at one of them. A two-story parapet wall, which is what they're going to do at that site. Yeah. If they talk to you about that, how no, ridiculous is that? It doesn't take much to get there. Really. Not to get off track, but have you yeah. ever heard from either one of them as to why they had a no vote? No. J just because? Um, my understanding is there's a concern about enforcement um, over the town line. Uh, even though they had an agreement between the two towns. Oh well, it'll happen. It'll just look weird now. It's gonna look like Fort Ticonderoga with that parapet wall, but they can cut out little gun spots on it, make it like Sheraton Tower. Remember those? Right? Yeah. Remember those hotels? Um, okay. Well, anybody else? No, it's great. Listen, thanks great. for coming in. I appreciate, Honestly, really appreciate, appreciate it. it. Appreciate all the advice. Um, I hope it doesn't take years. I know, yeah. Uh, I'm yeah. just exaggerating a little. But I mean, you know, from now to the summer, it'll, all be, it'll already be hitting a year. So um, it's just it, the, the site's a little more complicated than just sure. zoning stuff. You know, there's. Uh, I'm surprised there's no cleanup over there. God only knows what's going on. Yeah, there used to be a gas station, I think, next door. Um, yeah, yeah. Way back when. The, the way back when there were no rules. So I'm surprised there's no cleanup over there. Yeah. No, it's, it's a good property. Good. We don't have any issues in that sense, so, um, but yeah, it, it, has, it has its complications, its challenges going forward, so um, let's just hope that we get the special permit, and I think it'll be uh, straightforward after that. Great. Well, we'll definitely keep an eye on it. Um, and we're definitely going to have to stay in touch. We'll, yeah, if we as things can help in any way, just yeah. please let us know. And again, it, it, like, the, the commercial is by right, so Great. we're definitely going to stay in touch somehow. Yeah. <laughs> We'll figure it out. The more commercial, the better. Oh, yeah. Thank you oh, yeah. very I much. I really appreciate really it, guys. Appreciate Thank it. you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Thanks. Great project. So we...
We don't really need to vote on that. Was there a recommendation to make a half no, circle or something from the fire department? Did they try and make you make a? They didn't recommend that in, in that sense. They uh, they just want their fire engine to turn around. They really didn't care how it's going to turn around. They just want to make sure that there's a place on the property for it to turn around. Who says? They're not going to back out onto the street. That's basically what it was left at. Now, for us, you know, doing a round one, it's going to take up a lot more impervious service. Um, all right, so we can discuss, but we can't deliver. We can update, but we can't deliver. What they did is they wanted a new fire station so bad they kept buying bigger and bigger fire trucks and saying they couldn't put in the fire station. <laughs> So they got the new fire station, man. We got all these big fire trucks that are way over its side. Yeah. Now they got to go turn around every one. It's, yeah. it's great. It's, it's a nightmare. It's a, food it's a nightmare. I, I don't blame yes, them. Thank no. you. It's I actually, the certificate's in my car, so I can get that at the end of the meeting. What have we got? So the Junior Women's Club of Walpole has nominated the Economic Development Committee's um, night, Walpole night. Main Street Live? Main Street Live. Uh, is Walpole's best as night? As a you know, as an award. <laughs> nice. <laughs> Nominated. Yeah. Doesn't mean you won. Well, who could beat us? Fourth of July? Help me That's bull crap. No, no, it's in best thing to create a traffic jam or something. Well, we a, definitely would win I that one. We win that in Medfield, too. We would win that in Medfield, too. I guarantee. Um, I don't think who's, who's in that group. But. I think there's some question about whether the event will happen. What so, do you mean? Oh, right. right, right. Um, oh, yeah. you're at the Junior Women's Club. Right? Yeah, so there's some concern. Um, support for the event has been light, and you've got coronavirus. Um, I mean, I, I, I'm supposed to be at a Severian Gala Saturday night. 850 people canceled today. They canceled it? Yeah. Are you so a hawk? correct. I'm oh sorry. Boy. You're a hawk? I am. Me too. Hey, <laughs> I got a business card for you. <laughs> Check out my company. Oh, nice. Look at that. I feel like I'm in a school gym again. <laughs> you, remember, you remember that big uh, yeah, hawk? Yeah, you know yeah. each other? No, no, we're the same high school. Class of 86. 86, um, a few years after you. Yeah, 2002. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> Don't make it feel old now. <laughs> no, it's that thanks to their classes that we got even got gyms and all that good stuff. Right. Yep. Yeah, so yeah, the, the event uh, Saturday night's canceled. So they'll have to, well, they're going to postpone it. Brother Dan yeah. has to buy because he's off to Rome. So, yeah. Um, they'll figure out another time to do it. And Brother Dan's been around forever. Yeah, he has. I think he's going to be around for a little while longer if he thinks he's off to Rome. Correct. That's no one's going. To yeah, Rome. no one's going to Rome. Didn't they just shut the doors on the country and say that's it for a while? Yeah, I think they did. <laughs> yeah, shut yeah. down. Uh, I so think the, I think the country. Thank you, brother. Really appreciate it. Uh, shut down the country. Yeah. Crazy. Um, did you so still have these site plans? I think the event did you still have the site plans? Question. Are you about? Okay, when is Oh, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Right. My car and get it so that okay. you might give. I think you might have given back. Type of, you know, thing. What do you mean, joke? Well, traffic jam is kind of a hot, hot thing. Versus you were serious about you the traffic jam thing? Yeah, yeah. You actually yes. Yeah, but it's about most it. people. No, actually, no, that's it. Okay. Yes. It's not that a it? joke, joke that you caused the traffic jam. Right. A lot of people. Were there. Yeah, that's why. Okay. And it's a chance to recognize the event to people, so more people kind of get. Right. To go, oh, yeah. I gotta go to Main Street Live. Yeah. Give me your name again. I can give him a traffic jam. Say it. S A Y. E D. Obviously, yeah. we know that. We'll have 10 Legion next summer. We'll have 800 Hells Angels. That'll be a I actually love that. And so, if the event does go off, I thank you. Appreciate it. Your next man, huh? to go that wants to go. Oh, yeah. You do have to pay for the tickets. All my three sons went to school. Best school ever. Yeah. Which I think you should have. And, uh, Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, that was kind. Well, why does that? But anyways, yeah. um, we'll see. We'll see based on the light of what's going on these days in the next week whether that uh, event happens or not. Um, so. I think. Thank God, Donnell isn't politically correct. They canceled the St. Patrick's Day function. Did they really? So, no, I said that would be. Well, they're voting at five thirty. Yeah, they're going to vote. What's next? Oh, they are. They're yeah, that's it. what he told me. Unbelievable. See, that's so wrong. God well, here's the only problem. They still don't know. And until they know. No kid has died. Nobody under the age of 60. 15 people in the state of Washington is politically correct county that everybody you know, has everything. No, listen, what, what, I'm not, I think it's... Probably think 100 people to, died from, from the regular flu in Massachusetts last week. I, know I it, think you obviously... So what are we talking about? I don't about? want to get into a big, long discussion about this, but I think you have to... 
live your life and not go around worrying about everything, but in the exponential rate that it that new cases are being found, I think they just want to know what they're dealing with. Because if this started in Oklahoma, we'd have a much better idea. I'm not kidding about this. China has blocked off three cities to the tune of 60 million people that you'll probably never hear from again, ever. Yeah. Well, who that knows happens. what they're doing over there. That's right. And until we find out what it really is, I don't think they want to take any chances. Now, is there some panic going on? Probably. Oh, my God. Yeah. I think there have really? been worse things released into society in terms of illnesses and viruses that they just said, hey, everybody keep your mouth shut. Don't say a word. That have just gone away that are probably worse than this. Um, but anyway, that's not my I mean, purview. Okay. That should work. So we can't discuss anything because I'll tell you right now. We can discuss. Did it, anyone? Yeah. All right, I'm going to discuss this. We had five people out of nine tonight. Did anyone tell you they weren't coming? No. Do you feel that everyone knew there was a meeting? I mean, I, I send it out in the email. No, no. Um, I try to bug people. Did you send a reminder, out, like yesterday or something, for this meeting? No. That's a good thing to do. I'm not, every, I'm not trying to tell you what to do, but it, in the past, it's always been, it, if, to. if our officer sends one out, a, a, a reminder notice out like the day before, you know, like 48 well, hours. I don't, I don't necessarily before, disagree with that. We tend to get better attendance. It's nothing to do with you, I don't, but some of these people. John, I don't disagree with that, but I've been on this committee now for almost five years. You've been on how long? Forever. I Forever. reinvented the committee okay. for Christ's sakes. So this is my committee. The second Tuesday of every month <laughs> has been pretty <laughs> damn consistent. I've got that as the fourteenth. Can we confirm? The second Tuesday? Uh, yeah. Harry Harry called me and tell oh, I'm in to tell you that he had a last minute he thing. Called me. Yeah. Because yeah. yeah. that sounds late in the month, but that is because the first is a Wednesday. Because unfortunately, even though this is just oh, a discussion. Yeah. Okay. Right. This is not a deliberation. This is just a discussion for minute purposes. For minutes purposes. Yeah. Just a discussion. Um, I'm concerned about Staz because I think he could be really good for this board, but we haven't seen him in two months. No, Mark. You have, I haven't seen him since I joined. I've never seen him. He hasn't been here since easily last summer at the best. All right, so I'm going to have to put me, a call in with Staz. Um, you, know, you know, I think... He wants, because I think, uh, I think he wants to be elevated to a regular member. He that would be the very second he put so a letter, sure. yeah, a I know. letter in, and that was I, I know. explained he's, to him. He's hot and cold. You know what I mean? He's like Did you AC, talk to him? DC. Well, I, I made a couple of comments to him about his attendance, about seeing him here, and I kind of got some of this feedback. I don't know. Well, I just think mixed he'd bag. be really valuable. I'd like to. Obviously, I'm not. <laughs> Blaming him, obviously, for some reason, we don't have his mind share right now for this committee, and I think that maybe some of that is my fault for not getting him interested enough. But I just want to know what, either way, if he is still interested or if well, let's see if we can give him the next meeting and I'll bring him an application, see if he wants to apply to be a regular member. But that's his issue, if it isn't, and he won't show up. Ken, I'm surprised. Uh, I wouldn't really be surprised if he's just being careful right now. Yeah. Yeah. Normally, he'll give me a call. Oh yeah. No, I don't have any problems with him. I just My folks are doing that. They are hunkering down. Really? Yeah. They they build. They're not going to Friends of St. Patrick, whether they have it or not. They're not going to the Severian thing when they're having it. Really? Yeah. So My God. It's, Ken's ninety-two. Nice to be. So <laughs> they're kind of quarantining themselves a little bit. I'm ready to be told to stay. Let's go. Hi, Mary. It's crazy. I was on a plane the other day, and the gal next to me was an infectious disease doctor from Breath Israel. She says, "Don't be wiping those seats down. Or get rid of that mask. That's oh, I didn't have a ma I didn't have a mask on anyway." But she says, "It's got probably half the population is going to be exposed to it. And nothing's going to happen." 
He says, and it's like, if you get sick, it's going to be like the regular flu. It's only a small percentage of people who have respiratory problems, had lung problems, or already have 15 things wrong with them that are seven year olds in a nursing home. Those are the ones that are going to, which they die from the regular flu probably too. So, I mean, who, who's kidding who here? I mean, oh my God. I'll go to say, St. Martin. They're ruining the stock market. I hope they keep me there for two oh. additional weeks. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to start signing up for cruises. <laughs> well, you, you go from there. Well, three for one. Yeah. <laughs> it is, is it May 4th? May 4th. That's a Monday. So 4th and 6th then usually? And we didn't see Beth today. I haven't seen Beth in a while either. She's missed the last couple. She was with us. Um, so I'll move everything to the April agenda. I'll try to bug folks more with reminders on when we're meeting. It just sort of a quick, like a little reminder yeah. thing. Yeah. Can help you get attended. So we have nine, well, we have nine spaces. Harry's not voting. Right. Harry shows up. Is there <coughs> some form of hearing scheduled in April? Are you still you know, filming this? It is no actual meeting. I can't stop until you adjourn. According to who? According to public access open meeting laws. Well, we're violating the open meeting laws and she's videotaping it. So why are we violating it? Because no, we're no. talking. I, we're just discussing. I can't stop recording. Right. Oh, you stopped recording. I cannot stop she recording. You cannot stop recording. Right. Okay, I'm not seeing another word. I would... I withdraw everything I said. <laughs> Why don't you adjourn the meeting? You can adjourn the meeting. We just hang out. And I thought he did adjourn the meeting. You did adjourn the meeting. No, you didn't. Yeah. Oh, for Christ's You can adjourn. Motion to adjourn. Seconded. All in favor? Aye. Donnell voted aye. 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 Opposed? Abstain? <laughs>